That's right. And I got more to say than just 20 minutes right now. Thank the Lord. And uh, but uh, so you don't go anywhere to that. All you got to do is go home, eat, and take that Sunday siesta. Praise the Lord. That's Sunday now. And uh, so we just got all time, kinds of time. And uh, I want to say thank you for the praise singers this morning. What an awesome job they did. And, amen. And the praise singers has confirmed my message for today. Every song that they sung, they, they sung about the name of Jesus. And that's what I'm going to preach today. Is there any Jesus people in the house? I'm going to preach about Jesus today. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And you have been lifting him up in praise. You've been lifting him up in worship today. Amen. I know that scripture refers to the cross. When they lift him up on the cross, I will draw him in. Amen. But he's not on the cross today. And we don't put him back on the cross, but we exalt him through our praise and through our worship. We lifted you up, Lord. We lifted you up in praise and worship. Praise God. And he said, if you do that, I will draw all men unto me. I feel a drawing power in this house today. I said, I feel a drawing power. Jesus is drawing somebody today. Amen. And I normally don't do this, but I'm asking the praise singers if they would. At the close of my message today, if they will come right back up here, amen, and sing that chorus again for us because it creates the atmosphere for somebody to receive a miracle, to receive healing in their lives today, to be delivered from an addiction, amen. If Jesus wants to speak into somebody's marriage today, amen. Hell has attacked the marriages of our people, and I'm telling you, Jesus is bringing our homes back together again. Hallelujah, that's right. And he wants to speak to somebody that's, and Brother Green, you hit it right on the head. Somebody in this place has an addiction today, but you're going to walk out here delivered. Amen. God is going to deliver you from that addiction. Praise God. Everybody shout Jesus. Shout Jesus. Do you feel him in the house today? of the Lord. I got to get loose. That, that coat ties me down. I want to get loose in the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Psalms chapter 111. I go to the Word of God this morning. Remain standing in honor of the Word today. Psalms 111 and 9. And then I'm going to follow that with Psalms 113 and 3. And then we're going to go to Philippians 2 verses 9, 10, and 11. Psalms 111 and 9. He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverent is his name. Everybody read, say that with me. Holy, Holy. and reverent is his name. Psalms 113 and 3. From the rising of the sun. <laughs> Unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. I said, the Lord's name is to be praised. <laughs> Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. Wherefore, God also has exalted, highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, <laughs> that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. I think that includes everything. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And that God has given him a name which is above 
every name. For the next few minutes today, if you'll preach, how many is going to help the poor preacher preach today? Amen. If you'll help me preach, we're just going to magnify the name of Jesus for the next little time here that we have. I just want to preach about Jesus. I want to exalt him. I want to magnify the name of Jesus. The word magnify means to get something bigger and larger. And if we can get Jesus bigger than your sickness today, we can get Jesus bigger than your addiction, bigger than your problems, amen, bigger than your affliction. we got to get him bigger than what you're going through with, amen. And how many believe that he is bigger? How many believe he can take care of anything? How many believe that there's nothing impossible with him? Clap your hands and magnify him with your praise right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we love you. We glorify your name in Jesus' name. Everybody say in Jesus' name. You may be seated. As I was thinking about the name of Jesus, I began to think about why does the devil hate the name of Jesus so much? The Bible tells us plainly that the name of Jesus is the object of the devil's hatred. Amen. The world does not hate you Pentecostals because you talk in tongues. There's many denominations that have accepted tongue talking in this modern era that we're living in. They call it, they call it glossolalia. Amen. But uh, they, they that call, they don't hate you because you call yourself Pentecostals. They don't hate you for your holiness living. They don't hate you for your shout and your run in the aisles and your demonstrative worship. But the Bible says, ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. I tell you why the world hates you, because you're Jesus people. Amen. I said you're Jesus people. That's right. Some people say you Pentecostals are Jesus only. I beg to differ with you. We're not Jesus only. We're Jesus everything. Amen. That's right. He hates that name to stir the devil up, get to talking about that name. Singing doesn't bother him all that much. Shouting testifying and running and jumping doesn't worry him too much but when you start talking about the name of Jesus the name of Jesus he wants to shut me up this morning but devil you're going to have to kill me today if you're going to shut me up because we're going to glorify Jesus in this house we're going to uplift Jesus in this house Hey, we're going to exalt him in this house that's right I know what it does to him. He hates that name. In Acts chapter 4, you know when they brought the Peter and John before the scribes and the Pharisees and before the courts, they commanded Peter and John to speak no more in the name of Jesus. We said, they said, we don't want you to preach anymore. We don't want you to teach anymore in the name of Jesus. That's why he hates it. But I'm going to preach about Jesus this morning. I'm going to magnify that name that's above every name. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, devil, you don't like me to say it, but I'm going to say it anyway. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. We're the people of the name. I said we're the people of the name. How many's been baptized in his name? How many's taken on his name? when you were baptized you didn't take on a bunch of titles no sir but you took on the name of Jesus hey when my dad baptized me when I was eight years old he didn't baptize me in any titles but he said I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and since that day my name is Bobby Stanley Jesus Somebody shout Jesus. Devil, why do you hate that name so much? Have you ever thought about that? Devil, why do you hate that name so much? It's just a five-letter word. A lot of Hispanics, little Hispanics are named that. 
Amen. They call him Jesus. Praise God. Any Jesus is in the house this morning. Oh, there's one over there. Brother, you got an awesome name. <laughs> Hallelujah. He was born in the natural Jesus, but now he's been born in the spiritual Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. I want to I wanna tell you why the devil hates the name of Jesus. Five reasons, and I don't know if I'm going to get to all five of them or not. My wife will start po pointing at her watch if I get too long. Amen. Brother, but I want to tell you why the devil hates the name of Jesus. The first reason is the name of Jesus is the opposite or the ob objection of the saints' praise. It's the object of the saints' praise. That's why he hates you. You're talking about a jealous God. There's also a jealous devil. devil. The devil doesn't like to share his glory. He thinks he's pretty. He deserves a little dominion with God. Pride is what got him kicked out of heaven. Rebellion against God was what got him kicked out. There was a revolution. You know, let me tell you what the revolution in heaven was all about. It was over praise and worship. Says, I deserve a little bit of that praise. I deserve a little bit of that that, that, that worship that y'all been giving him. In fact, if the overhead people would help me, there's a scripture in Isaiah chapter 14 and verses 12 through 14 that gives us a little understanding of what was going on in heaven. Listen to it. How you're fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you're cut down to the ground. Who we the nations. Amen. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the further side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high God. That's why God got kicked out of heaven. He thought he deserved the same position that God was. I I deserve the worship. I deserve the praise. And I want to tell you why the devil likes dead churches. Because when you don't praise and when you don't do worship and you just sit on those pews like a knot on a dill pickle and you do nothing. Amen. Brother, you're, you're going right in the hands of the devil. You're playing into his hands. Satan don't want you to praise him. Satan don't want you to worship him. Satan don't want you to give him. He wants to praise. He wants to go. And if you will not praise and if you will not worship, hey man, he loves it. He loves it. He loves it. When you walk into this, welcome to the tabernacle of praise. Welcome to the tabernacle of worship. Amen. Nobody should have to beg you to praise. Nobody should have to beg you to worship. Amen. I worship him. He is my Lord. He is my Savior. He's my King. He's the one that saved and loved me when I was unlovable. Pastor Green and this praise team shouldn't have to pump you and cheerlead you to worship. God deliver us from pastors that have to be cheerleaders. Amen. I love this church. I love to preach in this church because nobody pumps and primes you. Y'all just come up here ready, ready to praise. That's right. Brother, if I go to steakhouse to eat steak, hey man, I don't just walk in there and sit down at the table and beg the waiter to f feed me a steak or get me a steak. Hey man, I sit there, I know what I want, I order. I go to a steakhouse to eat steak, not to sit there and look at the food. Hey man, you come into this church to do something, nothing more than worship and praise. Hey man, nobody's begging me, nobody's praising me. Thank God, brother. The devil hates praise. The devil hates worship. Amen. That's right. He doesn't like for us to worship and praise. That's right. Watch me, devil. I said, watch me, devil, and read my lips. I'm going to do exactly what you don't want me to do. I'm going to praise anyhow. You don't want me to clap my hands. You don't want me to dance. I'm gonna dance, I'm gonna dance, I'm gonna dance. 
The devil don't want you to dance. He don't want you to run an aisle. He don't want you to clap your hands. He don't want you to lift your hands. He wants to keep your mouth shut. Because when you don't do nothing, you're playing in his hand. When you don't do anything but sit there, you're doing exactly what he wants you to do. You're actually worshiping him. You're actually giving him praise. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Before I get my first cup of coffee, before I drink my first glass of milk, I'm going to praise the name of Jesus. I'm going to call it Jesus, Jesus. All day to the going down of the sun, I'm going to be praising the name of Jesus. The second reason. Because it's given him a name that is above every name. And when it says it's above every name, that means it's above his name. And he hates that. It's above the name of the greatest king that ever lived. The greatest general, the greatest scientist, inventor, architect, lawgiver, physician, or preacher. It's greater than Buddha. It's greater than Allah. It's greater than Baal. It's greater than any other false gods. There's something about that name that is different. I said there's something about that name that is different. When you say it, it's different when you articulate it. That is different than any name you could ever say. For example, my name is Stanley. What do you think about when you think about Stanley? Do you think about a deliverer? Do you think about a healer? Do you think about a miracle worker? What do you think when you think about Stanley? No, you think about Stanley Tools. Stanley Home Products. The Stanley Cup in hockey. Ah, Stanley's a proper name. I'm popular. Y'all know that? Got the Stanley name advertised on the billboards. They've got it in ballparks. Right everywhere. Amen. But what does Stanley has ever done for you? Let, let, let's just say Stanley. Everybody say Stanley. Stanley. I didn't do much for me. <laughs> say it again. Stanley. How many love Brother Green? Sister Green. Y'all, I know y'all love him. Y'all have already said that. Everybody say green. green. That was a little bit better than mine. <laughs> oh, but it's a name that's different than any name that you ever speak. For when you say Jesus, I want you to do it. I want you to say that name and see what difference is in. Everybody shout Jesus. Shout Jesus. Jesus! Shout Jesus! Jesus! Oh God, why is it different? He's my healer. He's my keeper. He's my true coming king. He's my burden bearer. He's my miracle worker. He died for my sins. He's washed me with his blood. He's delivered me from my sins. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you. And that's why the devil hates the name of Jesus. It's above every name. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, let your imagination go with me a little bit. When that midwife, and they might probably didn't have a midwife, but let me imagine they did. When that baby was born in the manger at Bethlehem, maybe she brought that little baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. Joseph, what are y'all going to name him? Y'all going to name him Zachariah? Y'all going to name him Joseph Jr.? Y'all going to name him Obed? What are y'all going to name him? Joseph looks at her and says, we ain't going to, we're not going to name him anything. I mean, you're not going to name him? You're going to have a baby and not name him? No, we're not going to name him. Why? 
Because God has already named him. For God has highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name. For the when that angel appeared to Joseph, amen, he said, that angel said to Joseph, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Hallelujah. Somebody shout Jesus. Hey man, give me 15 more minutes. Third reason. Third reason he hates it because it's the surest evidence of the presence of God. Sometimes we get worried about the presence of God. We get in a rut how God ought to bless us. If God doesn't bless us the way we think we ought to be blessed, we haven't had a blessing. You think about camp meeting, you know, you think about shouting and running the aisles. Hey man, and all of that. And uh, I've asked people, brother, what kind of service did y'all have? Oh, man, we shouted, we ran aisles, we climbed the walls, and we bent ceilings. God was really there. Uh, another, oh, yeah, God was there with Holy Ghost. We had Holy Ghost to fall healings, miracles. God was really there, and the preacher didn't even get to preach. Amen. We judge whether God's there, whether the preacher gets to preach or not. Amen. Uh, we asked somebody else, well, it didn't have much. Nobody shouted, nobody danced and we had preaching. But let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Shouting, dancing, running the aisles, crying and weeping, it's not the surest evidence of the presence of God. But I want to tell you what the surest evidence of God's presence is. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 20, if they will put it out up there for me. Amen. Brother, this is the surest evidence of the presence of God. For where two or three are gathered together in my name. There I am. There I am. Whether we shout or not, he's here. Whether anybody runs their eyes or not, he's here. Whether anybody jumps and runs and shouts and claps their hand, he's still here. He's still here. He's still here. How many came in the name of Jesus today? Any people come in the name of Jesus? Yeah. He said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am. There I am in the midst of them. That's why the devil hates you, Jesus, people, because you bear his name. You come to church in his name. You pray in his name. You worship in his name. He hates it. He hates it. He Amen. I gotta hurry. Let's go to another one. I can stay on that one a while. The fourth reason he hates it because there's safety in the name of Jesus. Proverbs 18 and 10. How about it? <laughs> oh, I love this scripture. Safety in the name of Jesus. Hey, ladies and gentlemen. I feel just as safe today if I was in the Lord's pocket. I don't have any anxiety. I don't have any fear. I don't have any depression. Amen. Because there is safety. There is safety in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Here's the scripture Proverbs. The name of the Lord is a strong power. And the righteous, I said the righteous, run to it and are safe. I said the righteous run into it and are safe. Amen. Quit pushing the panic button. Hallelujah. Brother, over, over, oh my Lord, 71 years ago, I think it was, my dad put me down in the name of Jesus. And I've been running in the name ever since. Hallelujah. Devil, you might as well get out of my way. Satan, you might as well get behind me. I'm running in the name of Jesus. There's a power greater than you Satan but greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world I pastored my first church in Louisiana I was 
in my 20s when I took the first church, I pastored. And there was a former pastor there that was probably two, two pastors uh, in front of me or ahead of me. Amen. And his name was Brother Henry Ivey. I don't know if y'all have ever heard Probably some of y'all might be too. Have you heard of him? Amen. He was a great Bible teacher, but one of the greatest Bible teachers you could ever listen to. And it was in those days where we didn't have any technology. There wasn't no overheads and none of that stuff. They taught off of chalkboards. How many remember those days when we taught off of chalkboards? Amen. He was teaching on this scripture. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it and are safe. That was his scripture he was teaching. And what he did, he was a stick man artist. He could make stick mans run. He could make them lay down. He could make them jump. He could make them go backwards. It didn't matter, brother. He could make that stick man do what he wanted it to do. So what he did, he had a little stick man running across this blackboard. Amen. Right behind the stick man was a devil in a devil suit, a red devil suit. Amen. With a Barking tail and a pitch horn and, and a pitchfork. Amen. And horns. And Lucifer was running right behind this little stick man. And looked like any moment he was gonna stick that fork in his backside. Amen. But just before he could stick it in his backside, amen, Brother Ivy drew a strong high tower on the other end. Amen. The next caption, he had this little stick man running into this tower. He slammed the door in the devil's face. And the next caption was, he had the little man at the top of the tower looking down upon the devil and saying, yeah, 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 you can't get me now. You can't get me. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's time that you Pentecostal starts yeah, yeah, and the devil. I said it's time that you start yeah, yeah, and the devil. Quit letting him push you over. Quit letting him run you over. You're the people of the name. The name of the Lord is a strong. And you're running. I'm running in it. And hell's not going to get me. And you can't touch me, hell. That name is protection. That name is a hedge. He can't touch you. That's why he hates that name. Amen. There's a place where the hounds of hell can't run. I had a dear, dear sister. Amen. If they'll start making their way up here toward the front, I've got my last point, but I want them to get ready to sing. Amen. I had a dear, dear sister that I pastored. Many years, she was at the point of death. I see you. Her name was Michelle Reams. Hey, man, we, we taught her Bible studies. We brought her into the church and baptized, and she received the Holy Ghost. A few years later, she got sick unto death, and they put her in, in the ICU unit. Church went to praying for her. God, bring her out. Raise her up, God. Hey, man. She later testified to this. She said, I was laying in the ICU. Didn't know whether I was going to make it or not. She said, I was so sick. I saw two dark images. God gave me a vision. I too saw two dark images coming into the room. And I could immediately look at them. They, I could tell they were the death angels. They come to get me. They were death angels. The money powers from hell to try to get my very life. Amen. Then she said, I saw them walk to the foot of my bed. And then all of a sudden they stopped. And they started looking at the floor. And I, I wonder, why did they stop? And why are they looking at the floor? And she said, I turned and I began to look at the floor to see what they were staring at. And she said, I saw a red crimson stream of blood around my bed. Amen. And then I knew, I knew that God was going to bring me out. Because a death angel cannot cross the bloodline. Amen. I'm here to preach to somebody. You've got the blood of Jesus on you. I said you've got the blood of Jesus on you. Amen. The devil can't touch you. The, I said that you're protected by the blood of Jesus Christ. 
Amen. When that death angel came through Egypt that day, Amen. Brother, every Israelite house that had the blood on the two side posts and on the upper door post, that angel, that death angel could not go through that door. You're protected by the blood. I'm here to tell somebody you've had a lot of fear, you've had a lot of anxiety, you've gone through a lot of depression. It's time to put the devil where he belongs. Amen. Satan, I'm covered by the blood. Satan, I'm covered by the blood. I'm, co I'm covered by the blood. I'm a blood washed child of God. You can't cross the bloodline. You can't cross the bloodline. Amen. The fifth and the last reason the devil hates the name of Jesus because it's powerful when used in prayer. Mark 16, 17, and 18. Amen. These signs shall follow them that believe. He didn't say they'll cast out devils and they'll speak in tongues. It says in my name they will cast out devils. In my name they will speak with new tongues. <laughs> They will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them or hurt them. Amen. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. How is that done? In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus has given us the power of a turkey. Amen. They had received the power of attorney to use that name. What is the power of attorney? It is a written document which authorizes one person to act upon the behalf of another person. Amen. He's the groom and we are the bride. We've taken on his name. Amen. When I began to date Sister Stanley over here over 57 years ago, amen, I went to visit her one time. We wasn't married yet. And I looked and happened to see on a notebook where she was writing Glenda Stanley Glenda Stanley Glenda Stanley and I said I asked her amen, why are you writing that you're not a Stanley yet amen she said I'm just seeing how good it looks on a checkbook I'm just seeing how good it looks on that checkbook because everything is that you've got is going to be mine too. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Brother, I'm telling somebody here, thank God, you've got his name. And everything that he said is his, is yours also. You can have healing is yours. Miracles is yours. Deliverance is yours. Everything. Everything is yours. Amen. He just wants you to claim it in the name of Jesus. Y'all come on out here. Amen. Claim it in the name of Jesus. Brother, the, hey, the reason he hates healing and miracles are in that name. Hey, we're fixing to have a miracle here right now. There's going to be some healings in this place because Jesus is in this house. Amen. In a few minutes, I'm going to pray for every one of you that are sick. If you come in this building and you need a healing, we're going to pray for you. If you need miracles, we're going to pray for you. Amen. The Lord's given us the authority, the power of attorney to speak in things in his name. Amen. In Mark chapter or Mark chapter 11, I think I gave them as a the last scripture. Amen. Jesus said, have, have faith in God. Have faith in God. I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatsoever he says. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. You can speak death or you can speak life. Amen. Therefore, I say to you, whatsoever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Amen. You will have whatsoever you saith. Your miracle is in your mouth. Your healing is in your mouth. 
My wife says, I think I'm coming down with a cold. I said, you keep saying it. You'll get that, you'll get that cold. Just keep saying it. Just, just, just keep believing you're coming down with a cold. You go, go ahead and get the cold. Go ahead and believe it. Whatsoever you say, it shall come to pass. Brother, we're going to take authority over sickness in this building right now. We're going to take authority over anxiety. We're going to take authority over fear and depression. Amen. Brother, we're going to believe God for a miracle. I was preaching a message on faith in Denison, Texas here a while back. A woman was sitting on the pew listening to my preach on faith. She gave this testimony after. She said, I had excruciating pain in my knee. I couldn't even walk upstairs. They hurt me so bad. She said, I couldn't even sit down and it would hurt. I had pain and I've been to doctors and they can't seem to see it, tell me how to take care of it and what's wrong with me. Amen. But she said, preacher, while well, you preached, God touched my knee and I was healed completely and I've been pain free now for about five months. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Jesus is in this house. He wants to heal sick bodies here right now. He wants to perform some miracle. Some of you are going through depression. We're going to speak Jesus over your depression. We're going to speak Jesus over your fear. We're going to speak Jesus over your anxiety. We're going to speak Jesus over your addiction. 